this is about where we left off, where yeah. we were. Uh, I had just talked about airbrushes. And uh, if you remember, we were kind of relating all of the tools to a stock car at that point in time. And I talked about that, that lower picture there that is the Vallejo paint. Uh, once uh, the Floco went away and the Polyscale went away, I now uh, use Vallejo. And uh, I think it's a great paint, like Polyscale, uh, made out of Spain for a long time. They didn't have a good distributor here, but they do now. And you find it in basically in every house, most hobby shops. The only bad part is they don't have railroad colors. They primarily relate to the military world. So on the left there, you see, I kind of make my own drift cards and I started making them on white paper, three by five cards. Now I do it on Sterene. And uh, the amazing thing I find is that the colors uh, really haven't changed whether it was on paper or whether it was on the stirring. And then of course, you got to mix the paint. And on the right side, you see the stirrers and uh, some of those are from old chemistry sets. Those of you who uh, played your chemistry sets when you were young, that's a couple of those are from, from. And of course they don't fit in the Vallejo bottle very well. So the caps come off. So that's why you see it's just a brass wire flattened with a hammer and uh, dipped in uh, some tool uh, you know, for handles and to put a little rubber on them grip. So yeah. that's what I use nowadays. And up on top, you see the, this now, you know, I've got the old Hobart shaker because I bought one. I thought, well, that looked kind of neat. I won't have to shake them all the time, but I use it. Um, now, of course, they've come out with the new Vortex type machines and much fancier, but a lot pricier. You, the new Vortex, a good one, uh, is probably in the $100 range. Then over on the right, you got your tapes. If you got a tape, well, yeah, yeah depending on what you're doing. Uh, Timea is, I think, uh, one of the finest tapes now on that you can use for model work. Uh, I also like the old blue one, the old 3M painter's tape. The frog tape is excellent. Just like they say, it does hold and it does not let the paint penetrate underneath. But uh, because it holds so well, I've actually removed paint with it. So if I'm doing more, uh, I really prefer just staying with the Tamiya and the 3M. Then you have paint holders. Uh, the one on the right, the fancier, the, I use it today primarily only uh, for the, when I'm spraying an underframe of a, a car or unless, uh, let's say like the Milwaukee Road, the box car, let's say in the underbody, car body are both the same color. I will use it then too. And that there was an article that appeared in the Craftsman and I always wasn't the best with a soldering iron. So I had a gentleman, Jim ben, uh, uh, Joe Benish, put one together for me. But now, uh, you know, you, for really for painting, you really don't need anything fancy. Up in the upper right, you see that's just a toilet paper tube, or if you got a paper towel one, if you keep a couple of them around, Anytime you need a quick paint handle, stick it inside. Uh, you can usually put it in a, in a shell uh, of a locomotive or a car body, a uh, freight car, and uh, soon you will uh, have a nice, easy handle to work. But then, then on the bottom, uh, along the way, I'm the type that when I build a model, I like to add my couplers and trucks. And once I got them on there, I hate taking them on and off and on and off for painting. So. I built my own painting jig and you can see it's really fancy. It's a board with four nails and cardboard uh, around it. And uh, so I can just drop the car into it and tape the ends off and it works out real well. Of course, when you get to the decal process, if you remember, I said, I'm a foam pad user, a lot of foam. And I just cut it into various shapes for what I need also for decals. And uh, the one thing, that, that about it is, uh, is if you notice in the upper part uh, for this, there's that's a set of uh, glasses that is uh, available for Model Expo. And it is obviously available other places. I paid Model Expo for it. And it, I just found it uh, within the last, uh, let's say four months, six months. 
and I paid their price, which is about $30. And I find it's excellent for, uh, now I can read every little fine on all the new fine printed decals. Uh, a friend found it, whether it, I don't know if it was Amazon or eBay or where he found it, but he found it for much, much cheaper price. So, and free shipping on it. So if you, if you were interested in such a product, uh, you could look around. Then if you notice just as a, uh, for when they do ends on decals, uh, you notice that that foam pad I have there has the holes cut in that piece that's in the center. And it's because you can drop the coupler, stack up a couple more pieces of foam and easily apply decals to the end. Some people prefer a cup to do that. Uh, there, I'm sure many of you have uh, techniques that you like and do yourselves. Then, then we have the scissors for decals. Of course, you can cut them with the scissor or you could use a knife. And the scissors on the left side, I originally bought when uh, Rich Meyer had Champion Decal Company. Of course, he's now deceased, the company is gone. But uh, he brought, they're really just surgeon uh, scissors. And there is a curved pair in the lower and the straight pair. I've used the curve ever since I bought them from him because the curves are outstanding for if you have to cut something, a circle, such as a herald, a round herald, which my own railroad has, uh, it is fabulous for that. And currently, I believe Micromart is selling, they call them either surgeon or they were calling swizzers, I think, some for a while. And the scissors, the, there's just many, many on the market. Uh, I like the surgical scissor, which you see on uh, several pairs on the right side. And most of them were purchased from the tool man when, you know, the days. Nowadays, I would think you could find them at Jane's Tools. Then you have the decals themselves. And, and you know, you let's say end numbers on cars for years, uh, you can't always have the decal you want or it's not available. So you can make your own and obviously uh, you buy some decal paper. And if you have, whether inkjet or laser printer, both will work. And it's just a matter of, uh, I you know, like the Clover House, I, I had bought, when I bought them, uh, about 30 packs of the dry transfers. They're, they were just fabulous. But every time I've contact, contacted them lately, I'm starting to run out. I'm out of certain uh, letters. Uh, he keeps saying he's going to redo them, but I don't think it's going to happen. But anyway, you'd apply the dry transfer decal paper, cover it with the microscale liquid decal film, and you now have like the, I use it the most for making end uh, numbers on cars. Then you they got the weathering and obviously there's many weathering techniques. Uh, I started years ago using eyeshadow and the new one out there is pan pastels. And believe it or not, I, the pan pastels, which originally I believe they were, did come in from the, uh, beauty market but anyway then you also have your Bragdon powders your aim powders I like the Bragdon I've used them for quite a few years the pan pastels you see here on uh, the left side and originally uh, they were introduced I think into the hobby in Chicago uh, the RPM or railway prototype modelers meets were there and that was the biggie in the country and Ron Manley in this little tiny crowded room uh, told us about Pan Pastels. And I ran home and uh, to Dick Blick and picked up a few. And on the right, you just see different app. You know, if you're the Pan Pastels, you can buy from uh, them the sponges for applicators, but any sp small sponge, you can use uh, makeup brushes. Uh, you see the micro uh, brushes there that you can buy. So cotton swaps, they all work. It's just a matter of getting the... Uh, solution on. And if you remember, this was the car we were looking at the time that the other tools I talked about that uh, we were doing the car and there was a finished one. And this is where I we cut it off, I believe last time. Now here we'll take, here were the two cars and uh, that one we were talking about and one I'd done prior. But here we have, let's take a look tonight at some of the other tools a little bit. And we all have to have putties and the, the 
one you heard about the most for a long time in the hobby on the left side, Squadron Green. And I never really cared for it. You, as many of you, I'm sure, have used it. You may like it very well. I really, uh, along the way, uh, discovered MEK. And when the plastic really, when you went from wood to sterine market, uh, there was a book put out and MEK was discussed in it. It's just taking the product, if you can buy it, and you buy it local hardware store and melt uh, plastic in it. And that's what I use the most. However, my second product is the Tester's White Putty. That's the gray tube you see there. And uh, now for the MEK, you notice up on top, if you're gonna try it and you wanna apply it, like to a small, you can see on the car on the, on the right side, the actual fasten, fast, fasteners, on that uh, rail on the door were done with just a wire uh, glued onto a toothpick or you split the toothpick, stick the wire in, wrap it and throw some uh, CA on it and uh, you have an applicator. But so just one way you can do it, again, you probably have yours, some like the auto putties and it goes on and on. Then you have uh, scribers and you can buy the commercial scriber but it's very easy to make your own, obviously. If you, I, I think it is, you take, in this case, you see a couple dental tools and what you have to do is grind a 60 degree angle on them. And if you grind that 60 degree angle and if you have it uh, ground correctly and you pull it across a piece of sterene, you should get a chip as you see there, a nice round chip being formed as you uh, pull that scriber forward. Then up on top, you have, uh, the, you know, the cutter, this is Northwest Short Line. Their uh, Micromark came out uh, when the patent expired. They came out with a copy and it's the chopper. And you know, it's like to do that roof, to do all the, uh, the ribs. It was nice to be able to just set up the chopper and, and there's a lot of ribs there to do like 20 some or whatever. So it, it's a quick process. Today, the thing you're finding in a lot of the kits are starting to come are the, the photo etch uh, brass parts. And so you're, it's nice to have a cutter form. And they say you can do it with a razor blade, et cetera. It, no, I, I recommend you do get yourself a cutter. And the two on the, the bottom uh, are, you know, there's the, the pointed one and it's it's the Zeron. And Zeron makes both of those. I started with the, the one that's slightly above light blue handle, but the one with the long nose uh, down below, also Zeron, like I say, is is the way to go. It cuts everything beautifully, does it sharply, and you don't bend in things or, or mess them up. Then you have your other cutting tools, the duplicator. Don't use it much in uh, doing freight cars or that type of thing, but uh, in the days of the structures, uh, when you needed similar walls, things like that, this was an easy way, uh, especially for scratch building, working with sterene, once you got one wall with, you can set up the duplicator and uh, cut as many as you need. On the right side is, is a big fat rule. It's really just uh, a piece of steel and you see it has a bevel edge along which you can run. Uh, in this case, I'm running a scalpel along it. The reason I went to these is because along the way, and maybe some of you have had accidents with the X-Acto knife, well, in my case, I took, uh, I was using a, a, a field, you know, the, the, the typical knife we use uh, for whatever uh, the, the carpenter will use or the former will use anyway. Uh, and I took off a little bit of my thumb, which uh, required surgery. So I have gone to this so I don't have to worry about the knife slipping on a, on a thin rule or anything. And this, these are nice, heavy, and they stay in place once you lay them down and hold them. Then like a, yeah, for if the, get into the kits, like especially the resin ones are coming now with a lot of photo edge parts. They, a lot of the, well, let's say uh, Peter, Peter Oliver, uh, when he, in his kits was saying, go to the small shop. And that's the one in the up, upper left-hand corner. I originally purchased that, the small shop, and I don't, it, what it is is you clamp a, a part into it, 
like a ladder, uh, let's say that you're bending uh, in some of the kits, you bend the styles on the ladders and you put it in, it has a tendency to slip. Number two, even though you clamp it tight, tight and get it, you have to run a bar across along it to uh, create the edge. Um, so I didn't produce, I messed up a, quite a few pieces of brass along the way, these fine pieces trying to do it with that bar because it would still come out ripple. Then uh, the, the beautiful tool came out by, it's sold by UM USA. And if you notice that's the, the one in the center or the uh, description of it is in the lower left. It works just like a brake in the brake shop. And you clamp a photo etch, let's say a style. An example is the ladders in the upper right on that car. Uh, those, those styles had to be bent. You put them in there, you clamp it tight, and you can refine that. And I put that on my blog. Uh, you can use a star knob and replace that one in there so you don't have to use the Allen wrench that comes with it. So it can, you can do it very quickly. But if you have to go to a bender and you are get into doing the photo etch parts, I recommend this one and it's cheaper and you can also get it in various sizes over some of the other ones that you will find in the various catalogs. Then you get into tweezers and we all have our favorites. I'm sure you all have your favorites. Uh, you see a lot of them down in the, the bottom. These are just some of the names out there. Uh, I, for example, when I do decals, the DuPont you see there, I also have uh, the, the Excelta. I like, uh, I usually keep three tweezers on my desk and uh, the DuPont, for example, it's not on the desk, it's in the drawer because that is so, has such fine tips, you can pick up a hair with it, believe it or not. Of course, they're not the cheapest, but at the same time, uh, like when you got to do very tiny decals, it's nice to have them. But the normal are the couple of the ones you see down below and then you want them, uh, you can get them, you know, uh, even in plastic tips if you want, serrated, non-serrated. So there's a lot of choices out there. And some people like their tweezers magnetized. I personally hate it with a passion. I, I want to pick up something and I don't want screws to stick, et cetera. Uh, for a long time, if you notice on the upper right hand corner, the many, you, you can use a soldering iron. They were like the old craftsman soldering irons. They had like a V nose for soldering and you could pass your tweezer in between that to magnetize it, demagnetize it. I know in the hardware stores, they sell those wonderful green blocks that say they do it. And I never had really great success with those. I thought they were so, so, but Micromark someplace along the way came out with this little blue guy. And that thing is fantastic. It really does work. It does a job, produces a small, a really strong magnetic current that does magnetize and unmagnetize a tweezer right now. So it's one I, I like and use, I can recommend it. Then of course, when you're, whether, no matter what you're modeling, it's nice to have the machinist blocks for you know creating squareness. And uh, if you see on the right there, there's a set of, you know, like when you do the resin cars or maybe uh, a structure and you want a true right angle, you can set up a couple of machinist blocks and then the little one on the inside and apply the glue. Now, the ones in the upper right hand corner are custom machined ones that I had made at the machine shop uh, by a friend who before he retired because I had the, all the edges chamfered and I had the corners and because that way I can use them. And there's when you have the CA and it runs down a joint, it doesn't, not the, the part does not stick to anything. So he sold those for a while, but uh, he no, since he retired, he doesn't make them. I've had guys ask about them, but I think you can do just fine with all the other machinist blocks that you can purchase in the marketplace. Then you get the saws. And you all have uh, some of them. Uh, the, you get the Exacto is on the lower left, the, the typical handle for the 11 blade. They make a saw blade for it and it's fabulous for really minor cuts, especially like uh, windows and structures. If you need a tiny saw, that also is if you 
get into sometimes modifying vehicles, which I modify resin and plastic ones. That saw does a great job as well as the, the one above it. Exacto does have some nice saws in that regard. Obviously the motorized one in the upper picture uh, is a Dremel motor tool with uh, a saw blade mounted on, on the mandrel. And that is an extreme fine. I do not know the teeth per inch, but that can make a cut almost as well as many of the, you know, the, it makes a finer cut than let's say like the Zona saws or the Exacto. But then also in that world, uh, if you look on the right hand in the drawer, right next to the, the front edge, you have now what they came out with a saw, this one that looks like has blades like a razor blade and has extremely fine teeth. And again, uh, the, the original one is the wood handled. It came out by Votech and I believe he sold the rights, which it's now sold by MUSA. Again, Micromart did do a copy of it and that's the plastic one in the bottom. But you notice that it has a broken corner blade. And the difference between the wood handled and the, what I call the good one, you notice has two screws in the blade holder. As a result, you get very little vibration when you're making the cuts. And where in the lower one, you still get some vibration, therefore can easily get more breakage of the blade uh, on the cheaper uh, version. The other thing is, is that uh, this saw, if you don't have it as a modeler in your toolkit, I urge you to get one that it produces, there is really almost no kerf when it creates the cut. And once you make a cut, you can glue the parts usually together with no sanding. And it was used like to do that car on, on the right side. So that was the Fowler car that I worked on. And again, that saw was used most of it. Then you got the rivet tools and you look on the left and, and uh, that's RB Productions. They came out with, uh, it looks like a pounce wheel that you, that they used in the sewing industry or, but it really is not. These, it's, uh, they make RB Productions. I originally ordered mine when I first read about it. I came, I ordered it from Ireland and it took a couple months to get here. Uh, are they worth it? They're fine. They work, I think, very well. They do produce, uh, in 5,000 sterene, they make a very nice strip of rivets if you want. They have different sizes. And RB Productions now has uh, distributors all over the, the United States. All you do is key them up in your computer on uh, Google or whichever search engine you use, and uh, you'll find them quickly. Then you have the, on the right, you have the old rivet press. I first used that uh, at one time. I don't use it anymore because there you have to buy the dual, the dies uh, to produce various it's nice to you almost have to have an XY table to keep things straight. And that all kind of went away when you had the, up on the right-hand corner, Archer came on the scene with their rivets now in various sizes and uh, different styles. The only problem is Archer has left the marketplace. And the only other one now producing them right, right now is uh, uh, you can buy them from Micromart it's a slightly larger rivet, but many of us in the hobby believe that somebody will rebuy the, I would think the Archer uh, line and bring it back to us. Here we, and then of course, soldering. <coughs> you all probably have a soldering iron that you use somewhere along the line. The big thing is, and in my case, not very often, but it, you take the model on the right, that gondola, that double sill step, uh, they were not in the marketplace of any kind of that style that I wanted to try to match the prototype. So I had to uh, bend it up. It's 10 by 30 uh, stock brass and uh, detail associates and then solder in the, mi the middle uh, run. So it's uh, once in a while, it's nice to have the soldering iron and be able to do if you need it. So that's a tool that you can use it and use in the hobby. Then the, you've heard me in the past talk about milling running boards, and there's the process of it on the left. I do not have any fancy mill. I think they're too expensive. Uh, years ago, Dennis, uh, I believe the name is so as I could pronounce correctly. He's, uh, in, I believe, president of uh, Acurail. 
he wrote an article in RMC about just using the, the 90, 199 bit in a Dremel tool as you see set up. And that's become my mill. And I use it to do the running boards, et cetera. And uh, you have to go slow. Uh, if you're going to do it, I usually mill most of the old running boards on the old cars, uh, let's say a train miniature car and Athern, uh, et cetera. Even many of the first inner mountain were thicker. So if you want to get them down to the, you know, the, the prototype was about two and a half inches, 25 thousandths to 30. You can do it with, with this process, but you must go slow because otherwise if you go too fast, it, you'll heat up the running board. It's plastic, it'll heat up and it will, uh, parts of it might dissolve or parts of it might curl. Uh, believe me, I speak from experience. I've ruined a few, maybe more than a few and not a happy camper. And then you got the vices and you got many types, as you can see on the right. It's just what you uh, like and what you may become familiar with. And some of them are simple, sometimes as close bits. So it's whatever. So that's it. That's what I got here. And uh, I'll bail out of here. And let me get back to Zoom and we'll stop sharing the screen. Well done, Lester. Thank you. I share, can I share one of the tools that I discovered? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like with the, you know, like with the Dremel, uh, I, st I stopped at my mother-in-law's house and she had a sewing machine with a foot pedal on there. And it had a place where you could plug in the motor tool and a light. And I, uh, she's gone now, but she was very gracious and let me have that. And it really works. I can, I can hold on to the, the Dremel tool and step on the foot pedal and it can go as slow or as fast as you want. That's nice. Yeah, that worked out good. Yeah, I have a, um, a butane soldering iron that I really like for when I'm working, if I'm soldering on the layout, um, there's no cords. And so you don't have to worry about dragging cords across stuff. Um, I've worn the thing, it, it has a, a cover that has a flint on it uh, to, to light it, and I wore that out, so now I just light it with a butane lighter, but. Um, you've never had, put pro I've got one too, I'm just curious, you've never had a problem melting ties though? With the oh propane? yeah, I melt ties all the time, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I try not to, but. Um, you but do once every, in a while. Yeah, every now and then I'll melt a tie. And so if it's in a place where nobody's going to see it, I don't worry about it. But uh, sure. but yeah, I really like that that tool. Um, the other is, and I forget what it's called now, but there's another putty out there that's real nice that I found at the hobby shop. And it comes from England. Um, you showed oh, yeah. us that one night. Great. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That stuff is great, but yeah, that's 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 great stuff. Thank you so much, Lester. Has anybody got, else got anything they want to share tonight? All right. Oh, I got everything set for um, Saturday. Great. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah. So if anybody's in the area in Valparaiso, we're we're going to have an outing at the Valparaiso uh, Porter County Library at uh, 10 a.m. on Saturday, Central Time. And Ken's going to be presenting on uh, the railroads of Florida County. So that's going to be great. And, well, it'll be good. Uh, it'll be good. Oh, uh, great. <laughs> it might be great. I don't know. We'll see. Now, if I can do it like Lester without breathing, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> this takes a little practice. Yeah, there's, a lot going, there's a lot going on in Valpo on Saturday, too. There's two three clubs that uh, that we can visit. So uh, we're gonna make a day of it. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, next week we have Seth Lakin is gonna present. And uh, let's see if I quick here, I can tell you what he's gonna present on. It's, uh, he's gonna be, be presenting on a moment in time, basically of this one train that ran on a specific day. Here it is. Ma, he's uh, he's going to show us Monon train number 56, Michigan City to Lafayette in 1964. And so 
that'll be interesting. And then uh, maybe David is going to present on the 22nd. Are you ready to commit to that, David? I think I could do that. That'll be um, uh, kind of a summary of the Chicago Northwestern Historical Society uh, meeting in uh, May of this year in Sioux City, Iowa. Things I saw going to and from Sioux City and some of the events at the convention. And uh, also uh, the models that were on the model display. Excellent. So I'm gonna write- Dennis Eckert, I bet. Pardon me? Oh, Dennis, Dennis Eckert. Eckert. Dennis Eckert had to have uh, models there. Um, he uh, won the uh, Lloyd Kaiser Award for a scratch built turntable. His son, uh, Jeff, had a beautiful uh, uh, work train. And, but there were other models too. Excellent. All right. Well, we will close early tonight. Lester, thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Oh, you're very coming. welcome. And we will see you guys uh, next Thursday for Seth Lakin. All right. Have a great night. See you guys. Take care, guys. Everybody have a good one. Bye-bye.